Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am very excited to begin a new short series on design for manufacturability with a machine design emphasis. Stay tuned. DFM is an abbreviation for Design for Manufacturability. While the last series covered product design, here we will talk about machine design. Obviously, this is way too broad of a topic to cover in any detail in a video clip series. So, we will not talk about things designers should already know and usually do, such as trying to reuse existing designs to reduce drafting time as well as the inevitable added risk of changing things. We would not stress buying standard components rather than making them because most engineers already do that. We should talk about tolerancing that is not too tight and not too loose, but that is also too much for this series. Indeed, I have written three different conference papers just on the subject of roller alignment tolerancing alone. Similarly, we are not going to discuss web specification tolerances because that subject is also too broad. However, I will mention that the biggest offender here is the do-all machine that tries to cover web thickness ranges of say an order of magnitude of more. Though mechanically this is not necessarily daunting, it is beyond any commercial drive systems to hold decent tension tolerances across that range. Besides, it may be too late if you've already agreed to the web spec and now must make the machine or make it work. Instead, our goal in this series is much more modest that is to give just a few common sense design rules that are, unfortunately, all too commonly overlooked. We will begin with rollers. What better place to begin this series than on rollers? That is because rollers are the building blocks of your web machine. Also, Aside from a few converting components, nearly everything that touches the web, aside from air, is rollers. And most of those are idler rollers. However, just because rollers are so common does not mean that they are commonly understood or that they are well applied. So let's begin with the basics. The best machines often have the fewest parts and that includes rollers. More specifically, we can state that the idler roller count should be as low as possible because idler rollers can only do two things to the web. Nothing or screw it up. Indeed, you can often judge the skill of a designer by merely counting idler rollers. The maturity here depends greatly on the culture of the industries. For example, in the paper mill, you will seldom find even a single roller more than needed to get the job done. In film, excessive roller count varies from minimal to where excess rollers exceed the number of useful rollers. In bag making machines, the majority of rollers do no good. So, why this big emphasis on rollers, aside from that they are the building blocks of our machinery and that they might indicate designer proficiency? Simple, it is because rollers cost money and thus in a very real sense start out with a badness. That initial badness must be paid back in some identifiable way. Rollers cost both the builder and the buyer at the initial purchase. 
This not only includes the rollers, but things that could be even more expensive, and that is the custom engineering and manufacturing of that frame portion required to hold that roller, as an example. After the purchase, the buyer will in some way pay for those rollers forever. They get in the way of operation. They may need troubleshooting and maintenance. Just one example is that it may cost more money to precision align a roller than the cost of the roller itself. I cannot emphasize more the motivation for clean designs unless you have to persuade a builder to clean up their designs, in which case it may cost you more for the custom request. Here, I'm going to offer you an admittedly simplified, but still very conservative cost estimate to justify my extreme disdain for excess roller counts. We start with the easy metrics of cost. A small idler roller costs about $2,000. Well, you may say, mine don't cost that much. You are probably thinking only of catalog costs and not accounting for engineering, framework, threading around, and maintenance, and so on. So humor me. In fact, in paper and steel mills, the rollers cost more like $20,000 for an idler roller and $200,000 or more for a process roller. Returning to our simplified example. We note that an engineering hour sells at about $200 an hour. That means for a one-off design, it may behoove the engineer to spend as much as 10 hours trying to get rid of a single idler roller. If they're doing a standard machine design that may be used in 10 or 100 orders, a much greater effort should be made in cleaning up design based on economics only. Just as you should have minimal roller count, you should also have a minimal number of roller styles on your machine for the same economic reasons. Often, a single idler roller design can be used throughout. However, I have seen many machines with the following character. A 3-inch plain steel roller is followed by a second 4-inch roller with annular grooving and then followed by a third roller with chevron grooving. We will throw in a couple of spreaders and a nip roller and we have a machine that looks like it was designed by a committee. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will talk about the much misunderstood discussion on the best distance between rollers.